it, if you would open your Bibles to the book of Philippians. Philippians in chapter 3. It's good this morning to have some returning guests, visitors. This morning to those two families that have been, we had that one, I think this is their third week in a row, and that one in the corner, second week in a row, and so I uh, talked to them this morning and about going and visiting with them because one of them said that they're looking for a church home. And so we're planning on having a visit with them and and find out what the, you know, what what's going on. I don't know if they've moved or whatnot, and so we'll get some information on them and have some good visits. And so now that you found your place in Philippians chapter 3, I invite you to stand as we honor God by the reading of his word. We're going to begin in verse 17, Philippians 3, verse 17. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an ensample. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Let's pray. Father, as we gather this morning together, this evening together, Lord, I ask that you would once again empty me of myself. Father, that you cleanse me of my sin and that you would fill me with thine Holy Spirit, that I may preach thus, saith the word of the Lord. Father, as we continue to study thy word, Father, I ask that you would help us to stay focused, to be engaged, or that the Holy Spirit would flow freely in here into every heart and every mind, or speaking what the word of God has said. Lord, have your will in your way this evening, for it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Thank you. may be seated. May God bless the reading of his word. Uh, This evening I want to speak to you on the subject, enemies of the cross. Enemies of the cross. If I were to ask you, do you know any enemies of the cross? As studying this, I was asking myself that. uh, Who do I consider the enemy of the cross? Well, Joe Biden, that's one. You know, uh, others that are political figures, uh, even Republicans. Uh, The one who just got elected as speaker very well could be an enemy of the cross. And so, and, and, and and I'm just saying that because we, you know, we know, you know, government has in, in, the world has not ever had a good track work record with the church or with Christians. And But uh, let, let's just kind of dive a little deeper into that. There are enemies of the cross who are under the umbrella of Christian, of the Christendom. All you have to do is turn on TBN, and you will see enemies of the cross. Uh, uh, John MacArthur, he wrote that book, Strange Fire. Very, very good book. He, I mean, he lists them by name. And, and I, I liked that book, though I don't agree everything that Joe, uh, John MacArthur prints or that he says, but that was an excellent book talking about enemies of the cross. And so... Uh, well, there are some, and so uh, some of you know. There's in, in talk, speaking of enemies of the cross, since the beginning, since Jesus walked this earth, there has always been enemies of the cross and false teachers. Right? There's always been those. I mean, even in the Old Testament, there were false prophets. Right? And so there are enemies of the cross and false prophets. There, listen, there are. There are false teachers today. There are false teachers in the under the heading Baptist, Pentecostal, 
I mean, you name it, whatever denomination head you want to put there, there are false teachers. And the early church was not exempt from this. Sometimes we kind of get the glaze over effect, even in my own self, when reading and studying and preparing to preach, I'm, I sometimes I'm like, Lord, why can't we just be like the early church? Well, there, even though there are a lot of pros in the early church, there's a lot of cons beca- uh, in that same, because there, are fal- there were false teachers in the early church. I mean, uh, and so... You know, there's always been, listen, there's always been problems in the church. When people are involved, there are problems. Doesn't matter if it's in ministry or anywhere else. When we all, listen, listen, individually, we all have the same mind, goal, so to speak, where we want this church to go. But when you get come together, that's when things start, problems start happening. And so the early church was no different, and they had some false teachers uh, that they had to deal with. And and the Apostle Paul, we've talked about this uh, in Philippians and about the Judaizers, where we talked about this earlier in this chapter. Well, he's talking about enemies of the cross, and uh, brethren, in verse 17, he says, Brethren, be followers together of me. And mark them which walk so as ye have an insa- us for an example. So he says, if those, those who are not walking have, to have the same mind that Paul, he says, the same mind I have, you need to mark them. You have us, those of us, your preachers, your teachers, pastors, you have us for an example. So he says, for many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, crying, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. And so the early church had many false teachers, as in today we have many false teachers. Though we can name specific examples. We can go to TBN and just list them off, not just in TBN, but all across the, uh, our nation. I mean, even in our city or southeast Houston, we can show a ex- specific examples of religions and names who are false teachers. And Paul here, he's given a general warning to the church of Philippi. And so he, he, he's telling them, you need to mark those who are enemies. False teachers are enemies of the cross. I'll say that again. False teachers are enemies of the cross. They are. And so uh, he's given a general warning here. There, ha- there have been and are many false teachers. And so uh, there are false teachers. That's the first point. The apostles had to deal with false teachers in their time. And so do we. In the book of Acts, there were false teachers. Remember the magician who was going off and doing those, thi- uh, those things? And you had all these other. Uh, you could go in the book of Acts. And I, 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 there's so many, I can't name them all. Uh, from tongue in cheek here, but there were so many there that they had to deal with, and they're at the beginning, right? And so the reality today is there is a variety of false teachers. You have one sect of false teachers, legalists, which the Pharisees would fall under, right? People call us legalists. They do. Why? Because we hold high standards. Just because you hold a high standard doesn't mean you're a legalist. Legalist means you have to earn your way to heaven. You have to have self-righteousness in order to, uh, to go to heaven, to have the everlasting life with God. You, and so there are legalists today, just as there were in those days, Pharisees and others. Well, we have legalists today. And, I mean, Seventh-day Adventists, one, of, one religion right there that has legalism in their religion because they have to add works the keeping of the law, plus Jesus to get you to heaven. I mean, there, those are, that's a type of legalist. And then not only legalists, but you also have uh, those that are, I have here written here, listeness, uh, uh, listen to this. Is, I, I can't, it's hard to pronounce that word. I'll spell it to you. L-I-C-E-N-T-I-O-U-S-N-E-S-S. Those are the ones 
that say this, God knows my heart. They're the, they're the ones that God, it's all about the heart. That's all that matters is your heart. That is a type of false doctrine, false teachers. And so Paul here, he, he often talked to the church about these false teachers because what is at stake? Why does Paul spend a lot of time in all his epistles about false teachers, false doctrine, false prophets? Eternity is at stake. We're talking about an eternal soul is at stake. If you go back to Galatians, look at Galatians. Two books uh, uh, back to Galatians in chapter number 1. If you look at Galatians chapter 1, verse 6, it says, he says that to the uh, church of uh, Galatia, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel which is not another gospel, right, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. <coughs> As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which ye have received, let him be accursed. And so Paul tells the church of Galatia, you got to beware of these false teachers. And so uh, their, their eternity is at stake. The gospel is and will continually be attacked, folks. The gospel has been attacked since Jesus was preaching it when he was here. And it will always be under attack until eternity. Until this earth is passed away and Satan is in hell forever, the gospel will continually be attacked. Look at Philippians chapter uh, 4, verse 1. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for my joy and crown, so Stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. He, he, he's telling the church, he goes, it's going to be attacked. All these false teachers are enemies of the cross. The gospel will continually to be attacked. Stand fast. Hold your ground. Don't fall to these false teachers, these false prophets, these enemies of the cross. So he, uh, and he, he says to stand fast. And so, folks, we, in today's society, we have to continue to stand fast. Not only point out false teachers and false prophets and false doctrines, but point out those who follow those false teachers. All right? And so, and, and make it known that what they are doing is false and that they are the enemy of of the cross of Christ. And so, there are, number one, there are false teachers. There were back then, and they are false teachers. Now, this is, you know, when, when Paul, we're, we're looking at 30 years removed from Jesus rising from the dead here is with the church of Philippi. Just 30 years, and he's still telling, that it's still in, the church is still in its infancy age, right? Considering where we are now, there, it was still in its infancy, and he's telling them, Listen, you need to mark those false teachers. They are enemies of the cross. He goes, I'm writing you. And uh, in, in verse uh, 18, uh, for, me, uh, for, uh, for many walk of whom I have told you often. And now I'll tell you, he goes, I'm, I'm crying, telling you this. There are people out there sharing false doctrine, false. There are false teachers. And so there are, number one, there are false teachers. Number two, False teachers do have a destiny. False teachers, enemies of the cross, do have a destiny. Verse 19, the first part of it, whose end is what? Destruction. The destiny 
of all false teachers, lest they repent and receive the free gift of salvation, their destiny is hell. I, I listen. I, I when I'm right when I was writing this outline, I'm like, oh man, that's just strong language. But I've got. I remind myself, I'm not the one casting judgment. This is God casting judgment. Because as a preacher, as a Christian, I don't want anyone to go to hell. Right? None of us should want anyone to go to hell, even as bad as Hitler and others were. We ought not to want anyone to go to hell. But God here, inspiring Paul to write this, right? Paul, under, underneath the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, being an apostle can write Scripture just as the prophets did in the Old Testament, right? Right? God is the one passing judgment. And so the destiny of all false teachers, lest they repent and come to the, the knowledge, the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, their destiny is hell. False teachers, according to God, who's, that Paul is inspired to write this, their judgment is eternal suffering. Now, I'm not going to say that with gusto, that I'm proud of it. No! I want them, as Paul says, his own countrymen, that they should be saved. I'm not happy that, the, uh, that false teachers go to hell. That's, that, that doesn't please me at all. What would please me is them to announce that they've received Jesus Christ, and Jesus is the only way to heaven, to eternity. But their destiny is hell. That is where they will end up. There are false teachers. They have a destiny. Number three, uh, the last point here is what makes up a false teacher? Because there's uh, so many of them out there. And teenagers, you need to know this. Young Christians, whether you're a teenager or an adult, you need to know what makes up a false teacher. Paul characterizes false teachers by their behavior. Look what he says in verse 19. Whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Paul tells us what they're characterized by. They are characterized by their appetites. They're char I mean, I'm getting ahead of my notes here, but who's the one who, if you look on to TBN and others, who's the head of the Ponzi scheme? The false teachers are. Right? You, you ever notice that the ones that we know, on like TBN and others, are false teachers? They have private jets. They have million-dollar homes. You can, you, can care, you can not only see a false teacher by what they teach, about knowing your Bible, but let's just say you may not know of a per this person that you're hearing of. All you have to do is look at their behavior to whether they're a false teacher or not. Now, I'm not saying you ought not to pay a preacher what he's worth. Hello? I'm not saying you ought not to pay your, uh, the pastor, uh, you know, for preaching God's word. But what I'm saying is you can, you can look at a false teacher by their behavior and, by, uh, uh, and figure out if they are a false teacher or not by their appetites. They're self-serving. If you will just send me, uh, if you will just send me uh, this much money, uh, listen, I'm going to pray for you that God will, listen, God wants you to be healthy. God wants you to be wealthy. Listen, that sickness, that coronavirus, it, listen, it has no right to be in your body. Sound familiar? These are actions and, uh, and behaviors of a false teacher. Jesus said in Matthew 7, verse 15 through 20, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. They'll come to you like a pastor. Right? In sheep's clothing. But inwardly are ravaging are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits, their actions, their behaviors, right? 
Do men gather grapes or thorns? Or figs or thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Look at this. Every tree, this is Jesus, every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits, ye, y'all, ye, the disciples, y'all shall know them. So, Enemies of the cross are false teachers. They are real. They're out there. They have a destiny, and their destination is hell, lest they repent and receive the free gift of salvation through Jesus and Jesus alone. And three, they're characterized. How, do you, how can you spot them? By their actions. They are the ones that are at the top of the totem pole. They are the ones that are on the, uh, at the top of the Ponzi scheme. Because that's exactly what they do. And unfortunately, thousands upon thousands, if not millions, of un... What's, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, unsuspecting, yes, but... Uh, Biblical illiterate believers are handing them cash hand and foot. Biblical illiteracy, that's who they want. Because if you ever, listen, if you, listen, I, I, we call TBN the, the, the comedy, comedy central for Christianity, right? But there is nothing funny going on at, at TBN. Because if you ever watch, you could go on there and watch clips on YouTube of what these folks are saying. They say things just blurted out and none of, 90% of it, what they say cannot be found in your Bible. And then they use the old politician. Uh, they use the, a, a, a playbook out of the old politician. Well, you misunderstood. You took it out of context. Let me correct you. No, you said what you said. I mean, when they can start naming and claiming apostles today, Hello? I mean, it's sad when folks who aren't in our stripe, independent Baptists or Baptists in general, are pointing them out. Any, any of y'all know Woody Buchanan here in Houston? He's not like us. But he's pointing out Joel Osteen. He's pointing out TBN. He's pointing out T.D. Jakes. Listen, these folks are enemies of the cross. Paul, he, look at the three things he, he, he characterizes them in verse 19. We talked about the first one. Whose God is their belly. They're, they're in it for themselves. Whose glory is in their shame. They take glory in the things that they say. And what they say should bring shame on them. Hello? What they say and what they do should bring shame on them. But they don't. They glory in it. They'll glory. Well, so I, so I, mean, I collected so much money. So much the last year. If you, if, you, if you watch, I, I, you know, you shouldn't watch them, but if you do, you will see these things. And not only this, he says, says in verse 19, whose mind, earthly things. I mean, look, church, these false teachers, why do you think the IRS is going after churches? Because of what they're doing. They're doing what they're doing in the name of Jesus. And it's not in the name of Jesus. It's the furthest thing. It's from their own bellies. They mind the things of the world. So false teachers are the enemies of the cross. And they should be known as such. 
They should be. Just as we would point out the Catholic Church, just as we would point out Islam, just as we would point out Buddhism, all these religions, we should be able to point out false teachers, the enemies of the cross. Because Paul says, they're out there, and you need to pay attention. Listen, these false teachers, they're charismatic. I mean, how do you think Adolf Hitler was able to lead so many? The way he, the way he was able to lead, because of his charismatic behavior. I mean, they, 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 they know how to do it. Satan knows, how, knows what he's doing, right? So, folks, when you're listening to the radio, watching television, I, I don't know if you've seen it, but there's a new commercial out about Jesus. I just saw it. I was watching, I think I was watching a football game yesterday, <coughs> and some commercial. I mean, it was off the wall. I don't even remember the whole thing because I was just so shocked by it, about how Jesus knows. Folks, you got to pay attention to who you're listening to. Pay attention of who you're allowing to come into your home. And mark them. As Paul said in the church of Galatia, couldn't believe that they're going after those that they were following after the the agnostics as the church of Philippi here is having to deal with Judaizers folks too much is at stake for us to ignore it eternity is at stake souls are at stake and they are those false teachers are bringing thousands to hell with them May we be a church that stands for the truth. Amen? May we be a church that stands for the truth and not afraid to point out false teachers and false prophets and false doctrine. Father, as we conclude tonight, Lord, there's in our own town here, our own city, there are enemies of the cross. Or though we should mark them, Father, we should love them and not want them to enter eternity without Jesus. Lord, I ask that you would help us as a church. Lord, would recognize the cost of of a soul, Lord, that we would not willing, as you said, any should perish, but all come to the knowledge of Christ. Lord, I ask that you would help us in our daily walk, Lord, as we talk with our co-workers and our family members. Lord, that we would stand for the truth. Lord, not just be dogmatic in our behavior, but Lord, love them, but be and stand and for truth. Or that as he as Paul wrote in Philippians 4, that we would stand fast. Lord, our country is spiraling out of control, even at a faster rate now than it was two years ago. Lord, help us as a church to reach our community. Help us to reach our nation, our state and our nation and our world with the good news, Lord, of Jesus Christ. Lord, I ask that you'd have your will and your way in the invitation.